Welcome to a brand new season of Industry Leaders. You'll meet people with real passion who through dedication and hard work became our industry leaders. They'll share their inspirational stories of resilience and hope as they advance their chosen industry. On this episode, we'll meet the industry leaders behind a tourism phenomenon whose philosophy is simple. Offer family-friendly accommodation in the best parks, in the best locations. Opened in 1979, in Ballarat, four independent caravan park owners united to form the Big Four brand, Big Four Holiday Parks. Industry Leaders, brought to you by Annex Media. Big Four is a national network of holiday parks right around the country where we provide wonderful experiences for families and travellers to get out and experience a great Australian break. All our parks are individually owned, but what Big Four does is provide support and systems and marketing assistance to the parks to really enable them to be the best that they can be. We're different from a hotel because of the fun and the connection, and we make sure that our parks have activities and facilities and customer service levels that really focus on quality, fun, connection in great locations. Big Four historically, going back when the group was founded in Ballarat with four parks working together, they set it up purely as a marketing cooperative. So that was about referring people from one park to another, having a brand to create a degree of endorsement on quality. And so we haven't changed the essence of that. Technology's changed, systems have changed, expectations have changed. What's great is that one of those original owners, Des and Margaret Watts, is still part of the Big Four group. We met at a bunny on ball to start with. And I said, I might like to see you again. <laughs> they used to have balls every Friday night at some of the country, country, country towns. Venues. Uh, would have been 1956. We got married in 1959. I was 22 and she was 23. I was a policeman, traffic cop, riding motorbikes. It was quite good, but then uh, six or seven years on motorbikes, doing traffic work, I joined the uh, CIB then uh, as a detective. I was sitting for a senior sergeant in uniform and I was basically told from the four members sitting there, said they probably better off up at the Caravan Park. So uh, I resigned. Big Four started in Ballarat in 1979 with the four private parks combining to promote Ballarat more strongly than it had been and to help each other grow their business. We had the Welcome Stranger Caravan Park and there was a little bit of pressure from the uh, council here in Ballarat. Matter of the, they had a council park that was operating and we didn't think it was fair to us. We gathered the four private parks in Ballarat together and we produced a document, a handout to people. We had four cars and they went four different places in Victoria to distribute the documents. So it grew from there. We used to have meetings around the kitchen table um, <laughs> and then you started referrals, didn't you? Yeah. To other, like Bendigo and... Waterball. And Geelong. Geelong. We, mm. When we talked about that, they got an interest from the park operators there. Yeah, well, when we started, we put all our money, we thought if things didn't work out, we just have to start again with nothing. It was being well run and it was moving ahead and we had people sort of lining up to become part of the system and they had to get past an inspection. A small town, you wouldn't want two parks at the same brand. 
So that was all taken into account. My point of view was to get people think, thinking and, you know, what about it, guys? We can do this and we can do that. Uh, if we all work together, it's, it's uh, not a big load. <laughs> We were at the park and operating it, and Margaret was pregnant with Susan, uh, and she was born and, and grew up in the park. And it a little bit older. She was two. She was two year old. Uh, I right? had Lisa, Brendan, and Christopher, and Bernard, four others as well. Yeah. And then later on, we had Peter. I'm a relative newcomer to Big Four. I've been here now just over three years, but that pales into insignificance compared to the length of time that a number of our parks have been involved. Of the 180 parks we have within the group, a third of them have been with us for more than 20 years. Two thirds have been with us for more than 10 years. These loyal, long-serving, wonderful parks have really built the Big Four brand. We picked out parks that were operating well, had good products and, and good, good facilities, and they moved along with us. Robert's great-grandparents settled here in 1852. They were from England and they cleared the land of cedar and in the first two generations it was a dairy farm. Robert's father started it as a caravan park when he was 21 in 1935 and it has been run by the East family ever since for 82 years. In 1935, we just had tents around the beach. Then as time went on, people got caravans. Then they started saying, can we leave them here all year? We joined Big Four in 1979 with the second park in New South Wales. My husband straight away was delegated as park inspector and he visited parks and recruited new members of Big Four. It went from just a few parks up to about a hundred parks at that stage. We got bigger and bigger as time went on. Robert was an Aries personality, larger than life. He loved to help people. He was a people person. He liked to advise other caravan people what to do. He just loved the industry. The journey of Big Four Beacon Resort started in 1970. It was a big paddock of seven acres and it had big water holes and lots of box thorns. And my father said to my mum, well, we could always just go and live out there, but let's try and make a go of it. We'll build a caravan park and we'll be the best in Australia. And we'll aim to always to increase the industry and to make the industry better. We first started off with 66 powered sites and it was just for caravanners. We would only see people for five to six weeks of the Christmas break. We then wouldn't see another guest and through until Labor Day and then nobody else and through till Easter. My father was a plumber by trade. In our downtime, he would go off and run his other business for the first five years while my mother Judy would stay here and she would build and develop the park. And she would do everything from mowing, tiling, painting, cleaning, administration, accounting, you name it, she can do it. She's an amazing woman. Over the last few decades, the park has changed a lot and that's been driven by what guests need. We have so many luxuries at home these days, so we want to come away and we want to have all of the facilities within a cabin that we would have at home. Gloria and I both grew up in Canberra. We lived there for many years. It wasn't until our family grew up and started to leave home that we said we'll go to Boatman's Bay. We came down here to semi-retire <laughs> but that never happened. We started the big business in the cabin business transporting all over Australia. We love work, we love being involved with people. I was unfortunate enough not to have experienced caravan and camping in my childhood. It wasn't until Oh, after our marriage, my parents bought a caravan and had it in Batemans Bay and we used to visit 
whenever we could with our children and that's where it all began for us. Caravan parks were totally different, very unregulated, very backward. They were just campgrounds really. We designed the park to operate around families. The ultimate I think is when a guest walks into a cabin and says, wow, we've tried to be innovative from size and putting in facilities that you wouldn't get in any other accommodation other than a full-size home. But in a cabin, you get that sort of accommodation together with the friendliness of a caravan park. This park was bought by my parents 34 years ago. They came in here with virtually nothing. It was very much a family-run business for a long time. Mum and Dad did all the cleaning and the office work and everything like that. And myself and my, my sisters ran the kiosk at a loss, mind you. 16 years ago, we joined Big Four. Since then, the park has changed a lot in keeping up with the demands of the Big Four tourist. Tourism was very rustic in the late 80s. It was very much mum and dad towing the van down. There wasn't a lot of on-site accommodation. It was very much tents, canvas annex put up beside the caravan and that sort of thing. Now it's, it's become very modern and bling. My involvement with Big Four and this style of industry was very much aligned with marrying my best friend. I come from a very different angle to this industry. I never holidayed in the traditional caravan park. I think the traditional connotation and the perceptions parks have really changed. So what's happened here at Anglesey is that we've implemented these safari tents so that people who are probably not as capable as true campers are given the opportunity to be inside canvas to make their weekend slightly more comfortable. The industry is capable of being very agile in that space, which is exciting because it doesn't remain stagnant and it's evolutionary. And I think the consumers react to that and it creates their story. When we bought the goldfields, it was very run down. Sue and I used to go out and scrub. It was hard work in the early days. Probably the most difficult time for us in business was when I lost my father 11 years ago, and it was really quite sudden. You always think they're here for the rest of your life. Because we've been such a tight-knit family, He's a big part missing out of our lives now. He'd be very proud of where we are today. In 1974 and 1975, we had cyclones and a massive flood, all in 12 months period. Cost us over $50,000, which was a lot of money. The sea came right in all over the park and it just took everything. Caravans were washed up the creek like boats. And at that stage, Robert's father said, oh, I don't think we'll be able to go on. All the community supplied food to help us back on our feet and Mr East and his two brothers worked tirelessly to get everything back in order. Dad passed away in 2006 from cancer. And it was a very difficult time because Robert, he was always seen as the main person. His father outlived him actually. Robert died at 63 and his father lived till 95. Mm. So he was still here to tell us what to do as well, <laughs> which, he, which he loved doing. The day I bought this park, I knew we had challenges. It was a campground with only 29 sites. We weren't allowed to put cabins on it because of flood issues. I've fought council for all those years to build up what we've got now. We took big risks. We put the first water park in a caravan park in Australia and it paid off. But that was a big investment for us because it's not a big park. It doesn't have huge turnover. So everything we've put in here is out of our love of what we do. We try and get out and explore those parks. Where possible, I take my family. I bought a tent so that 
we go out camping, we can go and stay in that beautiful deluxe cabin or I can go and stay in a tent and you have a great time. I was born in the park, so I don't really know much different. We have seven kids in our family, so it's pretty hectic with mum and dad working all the time and we sort of just, I suppose, grew up around them and we all had jobs in the park, so at that time mum and dad didn't have any staff, so they did everything. And we were all different ages, so my oldest sister, she would do reception, oldest brothers would do the garbage. We basically learnt the business from kids. It was fun. Yeah. It, was a, it was a family business, so everyone put in and got together and when we'd done our jobs, that's when we took off and had fun. Growing up in the park, it was always interesting. We always had new friends. There was always someone else to meet. But we used to have a wonderful time. So I grew up living on site, mostly from primary school up. All the kids always wanted to come around to our place to play instead of going around to their place. We moved down here into this park when I was in grade five, so at the age of nine years old at Anglesey, and I basically grew up here from then on. When I was young, we didn't go on many holidays. We were here at the park. That was our holidays, and that was an exciting time because the town was coming to life. I remember Boxing Day as being one of the most exciting days as a kid because you'd have lines and lines of caravans ready to pull in and it was my job on the old Fords and Dexter tractor to put them in on site at the age of 10. So that was my holiday, I thought that was awesome. I grew up on the park. From about six years old we lived in a caravan for four years. We didn't go on many holidays ourselves but living on the park and having heaps of friends and things, it sort of felt like we were on holidays. We had heaps of independence where we could move around the park, play in the lagoon, explore the creeks, go to the beach. We had a great childhood growing up on the park. We've spent a lot of time here over the years. Most enjoyable, when our family comes, our, our children come with their children and we all get around and have a great time. Sometimes we party too much and get into trouble by the managers <laughs> for making a noise late at night. Lots of, lots of happy memories. Oh, this is my, we met very early on. We grew to be personal friends. We travel in our caravans together for the last probably 10 years or so. Uh, we travel overseas extensively together with Des and Marg. Uh, I, I class them as great friends. We have a lot to do with, as I said, people from Cape York to, to Perth. They're still doing good jobs. And, uh, they're good friends, aren't they? They're good friends. From the days of Big Four being set up, we haven't really changed the brand. Those founding thoughts still resonate through the DNA of Big Four. Things have moved yeah, on. Yeah. Well, you have a lot more staff now. We couldn't afford the staff when we first started. Big Four is well recognised now throughout Australia. I'm very proud of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud of my family. <laughs> Big Four for us runs a lot deeper than everybody else. Knowing that it came from just four small business operators sitting around a kitchen table to what it is today, they would never have thought that it would have gotten this big. It started with Dad, but then it's lots of people along the way have moved it to where it is today. We're proud of where it is, where it's got to. Working at the Big Four Holiday Park, it's always busy and everyone's really happy, so I love it. Proud that it originated from my grandparents. I just feel very proud of the way that we've been able to give people holidays. That's what it's all about. It's our guests that are the main thing. And of course, having three children that have taken over the business, you couldn't be more proud of that. Lydia's 
leadership in this industry to me means preparedness to take risks, being cognizant of the industry at large and particularly within the big four group. Leadership in our industry is working together. We never see each other as competition. We actually see our industry as making ourselves better to compete against other tourism industries. Big Four has generally been regarded as the leader in the industry because they've taken the time to invest in the best possible website, the best possible facilities, even going back to early days when it first started. Ultimately, families and people will always want to travel. They will always want to have a natural outdoor experience. So the future for holiday parks is very bright. We just take every day as it comes. We don't know what's going to happen in three years, five years, ten years. All that I know, and it's a quote of Soph's, is if you're going to do something, be the best at what you do. As for our kids, they're involved in it already. We feel very lucky to be able to have our kids with us while we create these great parks for people to stay at and we're creating great holiday memories. If our legacy is that we have contributed to people's stories, then that's an incredible, powerful donation of, of what we've achieved. I'm very, very fortunate that my brother's children are now in their 20s and are now start, starting to come back into the business. So we have another generation coming on. I'm now a great auntie and my little great niece yesterday put her mother's uniform top on for the first time. It just makes you, your heart melt. It really does. So we've got a future. I can see us being here for the next 20 or 30 years now. Big Four exists on giving park owners in the franchise a return on investment. While ever they keep giving good return on investment, Big Four will prosper. And I believe they've got a great future. The industry is growing, Big Four is growing, and the quality of Big Four is growing. Because we're all putting so much time and effort back into the parks, all that does is, is make the brand even stronger. Big Four means to me being involved with a group of like-minded individuals that want to have the best parks in Australia. And I think Big Four, to me personally, provides great friendships. The park at Ballerine was a vacant paddock. We put a Big Four sign up in front of it. There was still nothing at the back of it. More people knew of what was going on in that area within six months than what they did about this park that was set off the main road over 30 years, just purely because of the Big Four signage People understand what Big Four is, people understand what Big Four means and what its values are. We've been incredibly lucky to be involved with Big Four, not only because of the connections we've made, but the access to the Big Four brand has really, it's been awesome for us. Big Four has been so successful because of the camaraderie. We got to know the other park owners so well that a lot of our people were sent on from other parks to come to East Beach. Robert always said a million dollars would never buy the friendships that we have made through the Big Four group. I think Des was ahead of everyone in Australia when he started Big Four. They just had the vision. They've worked so hard to do what they've done now and still running three parks at their stage of life and got a lovely family helping them. It's just a pleasure to see. I hope we're still sitting here in not another 51 years, but <laughs> at least at least another 20 years, so Makes whatever. Makes me feel very happy, very happy. Contented. I think we've done a good job with the industry. We have been able to contribute things. But in return, we've earned a, a, a living and we've learnt a lot. And I think it's a two-way street. If you don't give, you don't get. Ultimately, the people that make Big Four as iconic 
as it is, is the park owners. I can sit in my office in, in Hawthorne making some decisions about how we market or how we sell, but ultimately it is a customer experience in the park. And you talk to people who in the last 40 years have been to Big Four Parks as kids and now have their own kids, they bring them back because of the memories and the connection they have with that park. And they're the heroes. The park owners are the heroes of our business.